It is the dive rocket launcher. Take action regarding that individual. Relax, I'll handle it. TC is probably the most infuriating game mode in Item Asylum, but when you see that check for 1.2k Item Asylum coins, you start to believe it's not so bad after all. So today, we'll be going over how to win as many TC games as possible so you can buy Gakuin or one of the numerous coin player tags in the shop, I don't care. Let's start this guy with a few disclaimers. In TC, sometimes you're going to have people who look like this on your team. Other times, you're going to have people who AFK the entire round and ruin the game for everyone. This guy is not made for those kinds of games. Those kinds of games you just pack it up and go home because you couldn't do much else. This guy is going to be for A, how to play your classes role correctly so you can absolutely blow out the other team, B, how to win in spite of terrible teammates, and C, some general tips that'll help you in any scenario you face. Let's start. Okay, for some of these classes, I'm going to go over certain items that are most suitable for the role you're playing. This does not mean you should sit in spawn rerolling until you get one of those items. I only recommend to reroll once, and if you get an alright item, just roll with it because by rerolling more than once, you are severely hurting your team more by not being there. First up is Wildcard. Wildcard I only recommend if your whole team is getting completely demolished. Wildcard in general is a very selfish pick, so only use it if your teammates have no idea what they're doing and there's no semblance of teamwork at all. However, Wildcard is also a good pick if someone is dominating the lobby with an overpowered item, like a tank with Dragon Slayer or a backliner with Intervention. This is because if you get Intervention, you'll have greater stats than the backliner, and against the tank, you'll be quicker and can hopefully find some stunlock or combo synergy in your loadout. Overall, the versatility in your loadout will make you a tougher opponent to fight, but will leave you squishier and without any movement buffs. Next is Melee. Melee is a very simple pick. As a Melee, you're kind of like the frontline soldiers, and your job is to just try and kill everyone. I don't really have anything else for this class, if you want to learn how to dominate with it, just watch my melee guide. Let's move on to the more extreme version of this class, Tank. For a tank on offense, you should ideally be the front of your team, absorbing most of the incoming damage so they can push into the statue. Ideally, your support can use speed to help you push into the enemy, and also as a tank, don't leave your teammates out to dry against the other tank. On offense, the melees you're looking for are Illusions, Dragon Slayer, Dull Hunter, Mansimune, and Decapo if you've a support with Noob Tube. On defense though, you should be the anchor for your team. Stay near the statue unless you have a good movement melee like Illusions. Big Rock works really well for this because you can gain up to 400 HP, and if a support is healing you during this, you can get the 400 HP pretty quickly and make yourself a real struggle to deal with. The melees you are daily looking for in defense are Illusions, Big Rock, Dull Hunter, Dragon Slayer, Mass Immune, and Shadow Axe. Those are the best, but Comically Large Knife, Van Hammer, and Dark Cart can also work. The Capo isn't worth getting unless you're already dominating the enemy team. Because fostering Decapo and Smile with Noob Tube effectively removes two people from your team, the guy with the weapon and the support feeding him. Now on attack with enough time, that's fine since there's no actual pressure on you, but on defense, you can't neglect the objective for a minute or two like the attackers can. Next is Ranged. I don't really know why this class is picked so often, I guess because the 1.2x damage. The only weapon I could see that could be worth using with this is like Suppressed Pistol or Kentucky, but like just pick Wildcard or Backliner. Wildcard gives you more HP at a slight reduction in damage, along with two other items, and Backliner outputs more DPS, if you can aim. So if you can't aim, but still want to be in the back of the group, I guess you could pick this, it's just kind of mid in my opinion. On to support. If you actually main support, you are sent by heaven, because I don't know how you have the patience to play this class every game. Anyway, a good support can make a huge impact in TC. It can make tanks faster than wild cards, it can make backliners one shot, it can heal Big Rock, and feed to Capo and Smile with Noob Tube. This class offers a mind-boggling amount of utility, so if you have one guy that's just hard carrying the team, your best bet is to just go support and pocket him, whether he's a backliner or a tank, because killing a good player who's getting pocketed in this mode is extremely difficult to do. Also, if someone on your team gets small or decapo early in the game, be a good person and go support to reroll for Noob Tube. 
because despite how many tools DC gives you to get to the first and second trumpet, I almost never see it in game. Despite this though, if you are supporting get Smile and Noob Tube yourself, do not go for first or second trumpet. Your lower HP, lower damage, and minus 20 defense will make you super squishy even if you do merge, effectively just wasting time for your team. And the best for last, Backliner. First off, if you cannot aim, do not choose this class. This class is the most valuable out of them all, and if you pick it with bad aim, you might as well just play for the enemy team at this point. Backliner outputs by far the most damage out of any of these classes, specifically with Intervention and SSG. If your Backliner is doing really well, go support and pocket him with Strength or Fortitude. As Backliner though, your primary targets are the enemy support, the tank, the enemy Backliner, and if there's anyone that's dominating your team with an overpowered item, it's your job to kill them. The best weapons for this class are SSG and Intervention, but Spinbot works and Zapper can be a really annoying support weapon at the cost of DPS. Absolutely avoid Crossbow for obvious reasons, just reset if you get it. Even though I said in the beginning of the section to only reroll once, if you get Crossbow multiple times in a row, just keep rerolling because it's hurting your team more by actually trying to use it. Also, Backliner's utility usually has crazy movement, so although you're super squishy, don't be afraid to go sneak past the enemy and activate those teleporters. Although Backliner has a lot of potential, that's also because he has a lot of responsibilities. So once again, if you cannot aim, do not pick this class. Okay, first, I can't believe I have to say this, but stay on the statue. Even if you guys are just capturing point after wiping the whole enemy team, don't walk away, because then the statue is going to capture slower, and that gives the enemy time to respawn, come back, and kill you. Also, on defense, if the enemy captures some of the statue already, it naturally goes down painfully slow. So for the best chance to win, make sure your team stands on the statue until the bar turns fully blue again. Next, teleporters are extremely useful. They can either help you reach the point faster, or offer an alternate route for flanking the enemy. So on attack, always try to go for teleporters, unless your team is act actively capturing a statue. And on defense, always destroy the teleporters. Let's go over a few map specific ones. On the map Scary, on defense, the first point is the easiest to defend of them all. Just spam these choke points and bridges, and don't let the enemy get the teleporter to the right, because it offers a really annoying flank route that's tough to deal with. Likewise, on attack, the easiest way to win the first point is to grab the teleporter with a mobility item like Stick Horse, and then run a two-way attack from the original choke points and the teleporter. On Canyon, Backliner is even more effective due to the large open runways and large amounts of elevation. So if you're playing Backliner or Ranged, make sure to take out the enemy Backliner if they're annoying your team. Next, items with huge knockback are extremely lethal on Shorefront because of all the bridges and open ocean. So items like Meteor are probably the most valuable things you can get on this map. Due to the specific classes offering little knockback in their specialized kits, it's more acceptable to go wildcard on this map. And finally, don't be afraid to dance with Death a little outside the combat zone. Going outside the combat zone near the enemy's spawn can really catch them off guard and give you some easy kills. And that's all I have for the TC game mode. First, I want to thank all these people who helped with the production of this video, as it would not be possible without you. Coming up, the ZS game mode is next, so make sure to stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate you liking and subscribing, but thank you for your time, and I'll see you later.